الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وله الصالحين وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلم عليه. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Today, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر." ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر I can say a lot of us we know this surah and we have memorized this surah the importance of this surah is what we're going to talk about today in our khutbah بإذن الله تبارك وتعالى Allah making reference to himself metaphorically Speaking in Pura, he said, We have sent unto you, mankind, the Al Quran in the night of power, night of decree. And on that night is the night on which each and every revelation of Allah had been descended unto its people. From the time of Adam السلام, to the coming of the Prophet Muhammad. Laylatul Qadr. That night, a night when Allah decrees whatever He wants. Allah can change your life in any way. Your life that comes from this year to the next or the following year, Allah can change anything that He wants. He does anything with you. Allah can decide to take your life before next year. He can decide to extend your life before next year. And that all lies in the hands of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So He says, on that night, of decree is the same night that he first revealed the Al Quran unto the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So as the ulama or the scholars explain, they say the Quran was sent in bulk on that night unto the heavens of this world. Then, by verses and chapters, depending on situations and depending on incidences, then Allah sent the Quran in bits of chapters and verses unto the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the first day that he heard the word Iqra, it was the night of power, as we all know in the history of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Allah metaphorically is asking you and me, each and every one of us, and do we know what is contained in that night and Allah explained by himself that if you worship Allah in that night alone, whatever type of worship, either you pray nafila, supplicating to your Lord, or you're remembering your Lord by any words, la ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, any of these afghar, or you're reading the Al-Quran, which is the word of Allah, or you're listening to the Quran, which are the words of Allah, whatever worship that you should present in that night, if Allah accepts your deeds on that night, then Allah is saying that it is better for you than someone who has prayed and accepted prayer for a period of 83 years and beyond. So you see, getting that night alone is enough for you. That is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying, "Man qama, anyone who should stand on that night seeking from Allah subhanahu wa taala, from Allah he wants his rewards, not from any man. If only you should leave that night, meaning that you leave the night by remembering Allah, by praying to Allah, by seeking from Allah, and Allah should accept your deeds." Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that all your sins are forgiven, and Jannah is yours. Due to that, a Ramadan is a very great deal for each and every one of us to seize this opportunity to be able to get that night, because that night Allah described the situation of that night that the angels that will descend onto this earth on that night are more than any day or night that angels shall descend onto this earth. 
and within those angels is the greatest of all, Jibreel alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salatu wa salam. So brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to struggle to get that night. The struggling of getting that night is that at night, when you are in your house, before you get home after Tarawih, the night is short. You see the advantage of we fasting a long day, longer day and shorter nights. So we have shorter nights, about two hours or less, before the Fajr prayer. Make sure that you wake up. You don't even have to wake up because you're not going to sleep. So you keep the night by praying extra to your Lord. You can pray in the nafla how much or how many that you want. After the nafla, you can make afghar. You can be saying La ilaha illallah. You can be saying Astaghfirullah. You can be saying Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. You can be saying Alhamdulillah. You can be saying all of the afghar. Or you can make salah unto the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying Allahumma salla ala Muhammad or Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa sallim. And you can also, the best of all, to read the Al-Quran. If you cannot read, then listen to the Quran. Don't listen to music, because music is a, is a sound and voice of Satan, as Allah has mentioned in the Al Quran. He whispers through music. So listen to the music of Allah, which is the Al Quran, and they are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself. Now, it is known that winter prayer, the last three prayer, or the last one prayer that we always perform after the Tarawih. It is known as the prayer that seals your prayers of the night. So when you pray or you perform that prayer, there is no prayer after that. Now, you have choice. For instance, someone goes to the mosque and then pray the witr with the imam. If you pray the witr completely, then when you are at home, you don't pray the witr anymore. You have that choice. The Prophet Muhammad says, there is no two witrs in a night. That's one option. The other option is that you may pray and don't pray with her. When you go home, you pray your extras, then after that you pray the with her. Or you can pray two of the with her, because this is Shafai. With her means one single, an odd number. So that odd number is the last rakah. So the last rakah, you don't pray after the salam. You can get up and then you pray at home after prayer. Then you complete or you seal the prayers with that one rakah. Then again, you have another option. Maybe you want to follow the Imam to make the dua and complete the prayer with them. Then after that prayer, you make the dua with the Imam. While you sit down and then you make salam, then you make sujood two times to spoil that last rakah. So that when you go home after prayer, you can pray the last prayer in order to seal it with your night prayer. But if you want, you pray the witr completely, you go home, you pray your extra prayers, you don't pray with till again. These are all options, you can choose any of them that you want. In this mosque, inshallah, we keep only one night. It had been that. We need not explain. One night, and that will be the night of next Friday, meaning that on Thursday, in the night, when we pray Tarawih, we remain until the Salat of Fajr. Now, which of the nights is known as the night of power? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a revelation when Allah informed him about the night of power. Then he came out to the Sahaba in order to inform them. Then he found two people within the Sahaba who had adversity between them. They were fighting. He said, O oh man, I have come to inform you about the night of power, which night it is. And I realized two people among my Sahaba were fighting and the revelation was lifted. So if you want the night, seek for it in the last 10 days of Ramadan. This is one hadith. In another hadith also, you seek for the night in the odd days of the last nights of Ramadan. On the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, or 29th. And there is another authentic hadith that the Sahabi who narrated this hadith, he swore by saying that I heard the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirming that the night of power is on the 27th night of Ramadan. So if you watch, when 27th night comes, the whole world, Muslims, make sure that that night is being observed. If there is no delay or there is no evidence to this, 
they wouldn't have kept it because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "My ummah will never agree on a mistake." So it is more better that you make this or you pray in the group. Group means what? With the jamaah. Because if even your prayer is not accepted as an individual, maybe by the blessing that Allah had made on one of you in the mosque, the blessing may affect each and every one of us. Someone was buried somewhere when he died. Then someone saw another person who had been in the grave for a long time in a dream and ask him how has Allah done with you he said we were in a very tight situation and just recently someone was buried and his rahma affected us all within the grave that is why you are always to be in the jamaah and that refers to Musa alayhi salam's qissa someone who had been making sin committing sin for a long time when he asked Allah to give them rain Allah didn't give them rain or oh, Allah why Allah said there is one person who is sinning. He has been sinning against me for 40 years. I will not bless you with the death of that person. Allah, we have about 70,000 because of one person. Yes, the dirt. I am not going to give you rain. Then the man lifted his shirt and then covered his head without anyone knowing about him. He said, Allah, I sin against myself and you for a period of 40 years. And because of me, we have this sort of situation. Allah, you are most merciful. And here I am asking you in secret, Oh Allah, forgive me. Before Musa will turn his back, then rain started dropping like stones. When Musa listened and said, Oh Allah, you say you do not give us rain because of someone. Then Allah said, I have blessed you with the rain because of the same person. See, and Musa said, why? He said, because the person has repented. Musa said, oh Allah, can you make us see the person? Then Allah said, I don't expose the secret of my servant to anyone. So you see, one person's Rahma, when Allah forgave him the sin that he has committed, the Rahma affected each and every one in the mosque. Then this known story that I've been repeating all the time, I'll repeat it again. Maybe someone had never heard it. A scholar in Saudi Arabia said, this happened to himself. One day he went to the haram. On the night of decree, on the 27th night of Ramadan, he went to pray. And when he was out, after the prayer, going home, in his car, he stopped by the traffic light, and at his side was another car. In that car, there was heavy music. Jay-Z, right? Don't ask me how I knew the name. So he got up out of his car and then went to advise the person. The moment he came, the person said, I will not put off my music. Leave me alone. He said, brother, I will never leave you. I have come to say salam to you. He said, allow me. I am a dirty person. I know you are going to preach and all those words that you've been saying before. I don't want to listen to you. He said, brother, I'm not asking you to put off your music. I only want to tell you one thing. Allow me to talk to you. He said, okay, talk. He said, where are you coming from? He said, you, you are not coming from the most purified place in the house of Allah. You know where I'm coming from? He said, no. He said, I have just committed adultery and I'm going home. So allow me. Allah will punish me and I know. He said, brother, Allah will not punish you. He said, how? He said, because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, anyone who commits a sin and know he has committed a sin and he has a Lord Allah who forgives all sins, he only know that Allah is the only one who forgives sins. No matter how much the sins that he has committed and if only he goes to Allah with sincere heart and repent, Allah will forgive him all his sins and turn his sins into good deeds. Then the man drove off. But while he was walking or he was driving, this was sounding in his ears. Turaka and Allah will forgive me. Turaka, it was sounding in his ears. And when he arrived at home, what happened? He went to put take shower and after that he performed Turaka. He met the Sheikh after one month. He said, Sheikh, may Allah bless you. The Sheikh said, What? He didn't even remember this person again. 
He said, he narrated the story, you met me at a certain so place, and this is what happened. He said, Wallahi, when I got home, I took shower and made or performed two raka. And after performing the two raka and making salam, I felt like they pour cold water on my body. And immediately after that, I performed the umrah by walking through all those places I'm supposed to go. And today, I'm memorizing the Quran. I hate anything that is bad. I'm always with people who are good. And I'm calling people to the right way. So may Allah bless you. So to Raka, sincerely, Allah had forgiven him. On a night which is more purified, he committed one of the biggest sins. But Allah is saying that, Sallim ilayya al-amara. Present everything that you have, all your problems to me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa'alam, and know for sure, the annani, that I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, udabbiru al-ahkami wa af'alu ma'asha, the only one who can do whatever he wants, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. Brothers and sisters in Islam, those who have been committing sin before Ramadan, the time has come. We are all sinners. Let's try to make this last time that we will ever go back to our sins. Those who have not been praying before Ramadan, take it that Allah has accepted you to pray every day, five times a day, and go back to Allah. Those who have been listening to music, the music of Allah, which is the voice of Allah, is more important than any other music. Listen to that. That is why the Prophet ﷺ said that when you read the Al-Quran, sing it, <coughs> beautify it. And that is why you would love to pray or you love to listen to people who read the Quran nicely because they are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and just in Islam, let's go back to Allah and let's make sure that we hold on to our religion. That the Sahaba or the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they held onto the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and within a very short time, Allah made them to control the whole world. They were the whole world, controlling the whole world. whole world was under their feet. They do whatever they want. But of course, they don't do what is beyond what they are supposed to do. And due to that, Islam has spread from all corners of the world. Because they were saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But today we see our situation. It's because we left the Quran. We read the Quran like a newspaper. We don't work with the Quran. We read the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we say it's outmoded. It's a long time. We don't need to work with it again. And this is why when you leave Allah, Allah leaves you with whatever you've taken. And that is our situation today. We are like puppets. They deal with us anywhere, anywhere how they want. Whatever they want to do, they do with us. Because they know that we don't have any leader. We are like a body without a head. A body without a head. So where do you go? You don't have eyes, you don't have ears, you don't have mouth. No part of this body that controls the whole body is gone. That is why Muslim is today. And that is why we are being used anyhow. Anyhow they want to use us, they use us. Because we don't go back to our Lord. We have forgotten our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we forgot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the leader of this deen as he says, in the deen in the law in Islam. And your teacher is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you turn your back to Allah, Allah says, if you turn your back, I change you with other people and they will never be like you. So among the good things that we can do is to make sure that these 10 days we do a lot of good deeds. Help the poor, help the orphans, help the needy. Give the Lord of Sadaqah, give Zakah, help your parents, help your brothers and sisters even where they are in this world. And make sure that they are standing on their feet. Let's not wait only in Ramadan. Someone will say, now you see I have some poor people in my country, I want to give them a Zakah to Have you been feeding them for the whole of the 11, 11 months? No. So you want to reduce your work, your sins with them. It doesn't do anything. If you know that they are poor, always try to help them. Not only you wait for Ramadan. Ramadan, it doubles. But make sure that you always help them. If only you are what? You are sincere in your help. That's what we have to understand. So brothers and sisters in Islam, let's do a lot of good. Ramadan has come. Let's give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we expect from Allah and Allah alone.